Hey guys, Richard Rich Rebuilds here, and we are back with the Hayabusa Swap Caddy pickup truck. If you aren't up to speed, we're swapping a turbocharged Hayabusa engine and a Volkswagen Caddy pickup truck and its mid-engine. No front engine business, but where the front engine was, we're going to put an electric motor and a battery up there. So it's a mid-engine hybrid pickup truck, a world's first. What does it remind you of? An i8, of course. The BMW i8 was also mid-engine and hybrid and all-wheel drive, and when the electric motor ran out of power, it was rear-wheel drive only, just like the Hayabusa Swap Caddy's gonna be. In the first episode, until now, we unveiled the project, added the front electric motor, and started the process of mounting the rear motor. Well, in this episode, we're gonna hopefully take it for its first test drive, but we have to figure out a few things first. What wheels and tires are gonna be, because remember, the Ford Ranger bolt pattern is not the same as the Volkswagen. How to control the throttle, all of that good stuff, and we're also going to show you guys some tricks that we have up our sleeve for the Hayabusa side of things. So this will be a pretty action-packed episode. Well, at least I hope so. It's going to be fun. Won't be easy, but you know what is easy? Making our website with Squarespace. It's easy to claim a domain or URL like www.rvwcaddiesbetterthanan.i8.com or www.waitintilyouseethewheelswe'reputtingonthisthing.com. Then you create a custom site that matches your style and enthusiasm. Check out these page templates because they'll make your webpage look better than the looks VW owners give you when you tell them they have to maintain their vehicle. Head to www.squarespace.com since Rich Rebuild save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code in the description box below. Shout out to Squarespace for making platforms of people's passions no matter what crazy idea they had in mind. Let's get to work. Now I know you guys have been complaining a lot about this and I've been complaining about it too. I finally got one of my favorite tools ever, a plasma cutter. This plasma cutter we'll be using in this episode constantly pretty much, and this has saved us hours worth of time. I know you guys enjoy seeing me struggle and cutting things with metal blades, and that takes forever, but this plasma cutter has absolutely saved us. Uh, it's a cheap one. I got it on Amazon, and it's extremely effective, and it's had to have saved us at least three to four hours worth of work so far. So this thing has been awesome. Keep in mind, I've never used a plasma cutter before. I've made several errors in this video trying to use it for the first time, but now that I have a little bit more experience with it, I'm getting the hang of it, and I think I'll get better over time, but man, this thing is absolutely deadly if you're not careful. So be careful with this thing. It's not for everyone. Okay, boys and girls, before we get into this video, I just wanna address a few comments that I've seen on the last video because I do look at the comments and I do care deeply and it hurts my heart when you say mean things, but one of the most annoying comments was, why is this taking so long? And I know we live in a, in a society where you have Facebook Reels and you have YouTube Shorts and you have all these quick clips where like it gets your jollies in a very short period of time. You get to see some things start to finish. This is not one of those things. Good things take time. I'm sorry you didn't see enough happening in the last episode and I could tell you've never built anything before, but sometimes these things take a long time. For example, Project Binky. You know Project Binky? The four-wheel drive Austin Mini Cooper that Bad Obsession Motorsports has been building for the last 10 years. I'm not knocking it. I think it's a great build, but they've been doing it for 10 years. Good things take time. I, in 10 years, I've had how many divorces? Four? I think five. Five divorces in 10 years. Okay, I've had five separate families in that time before they could finish this one project and they're still not even close to done. So I don't wanna hear anything about this taking too long because good things take time and this is something good, okay? So relax. Like this is real time stuff. All the Motor Trend shows that you see where they build an entire concourse level car in, in 30 minutes is not real. They have a team of 927 guys work on the car at night we don't have an unlimited budget and unlimited budget. We have budgets here. Uh, you guys don't buy the merch. So <laughs> you, guys, <laughs> you, you guys don't buy the merch. So we have to we have to rely on begging, borrowing and stealing for these things. So it takes a long time. I can't afford to pay. John, what was the last time I paid you? Um.
This is way better than freaking cutting and grinding. Well, you know, yeah, I learned something. You can smell the axe and grease burning? Yeah, you could smell it for sure. Holy smokes. Did it! It took two seconds. Okay, where were we? Uh, not much has changed to the naked eye, but as you can see, Joey added some more mounts. He added uh, four points of contact to connect the engine to the frame of the truck. That's finished. That's finished here. Uh, we need some additional bracing right there, but we has that and some more is gonna go in the front. We have that point of contact here. That rod is slightly bent just so we could actually fill this with um, uh, oil. And on that side, that's connected there as well. What we're gonna do now is, Joey thankfully brought us this, oh, the hot, uh, uh. We got this online, and uh, after taking off the rear sprocket, we have to put this dry shaft adapter on it. Uh, the only unfortunate part is that this dry shaft adapter, it's a press fit. So we have to heat this up and put this on. So at this point, we're at the point of no return, right, Joey? Because yeah. once we put this on, it's not coming off easy anytime soon. So. I'm gonna heat this up. Uh, Joey's gonna get everything ready and he's gonna use the rubber mallet to push this on once it's fully heated up. Joey, you got your gloves on? It's gonna get real hot. Do it. All right, let's do it. Go for it. Oh God, it's hot. Yeah, it is, there we go. That press fit, baby. That's it. That's it. How'd the glove hold up? Smell it? Oh, I guess it's burnt. Yep. Yeah, who knew that having that for five minutes, a torch on it for five minutes would do so much? Okay, at this point, we're ready to start creating the dry shaft for this bad boy. Uh, that's probably the most important part of this build, making sure the power could connect from the motor itself to the rear axle, and we're working on that right now, Joey and I, with a hodgepodge of parts uh, that we found out of the scrap bin. Also, John Ross is here. I am. Hello, John Ross. How's it going, guys? John Ross, we're having some issues with this. Yes. And we know that John Ross has some uh, experience. I thought you with, called with... me to work on the BMW. Yeah, actually, you're here for the BMW. We'll talk about that later. Okay. But uh, he's going to help us with some Hayabusa stuff, uh, the BMW stuff, uh, some Model X stuff. Yeah. Am I talking about that now? Some pressure washing some stuff. Some pressure washing stuff. Skateboard stuff. Jack of all trades. He drove all this way just to help us out. So thank you, John Ross. I actually pedaled all this way on a bicycle. On a bicycle yeah. from Kansas. Yeah, it, it was a little longer than the tow truck, but not too yeah, much longer. Not <laughs> <laughs> if the tow truck and you left on that bicycle at the same time, it would probably get here an hour after, before you did, the right. tow truck. Right, All right, so it wasn't terrible. I agree. All right, Joey, what are we, what are we cutting? Uh, Joey's Joseph, what the hell are we doing this? From, uh, John I, Shaw. This is from an MG Midget, I believe. I think so. MG Midget. Yeah. And uh, Joey's gonna cut this off right now. And uh, we're going to mend it with this piece right here. This is the original, well, a, a fraction of the dry shaft from the Ford Ranger. And uh, we're going to uh, do our best to join these two pieces together. Yeah. And holy matrimony. Well, not holy, because that's, yeah. you get the point. Just I love getting our money's worth. Joey, I actually still think we have some life in that left. Oh, I was gonna ask, Rich, why he keeps cool. using this concrete saw. Yeah, no, this, this, this is metal, baby. This is metal. Actually, you know what's funny, Joey? No, we're not done with this yet. It is Ready? Hot. You know what's gonna happen? Let's do it. Let's, <laughs> Let's do put it. it. I'll put it on this one now. I will say I run these wheels on this thing. I use that thing. About to there every time. Same here, man, yeah. same here. Good yeah, luck with that's, that. that's still got some life I in think, it. I It'll don't think it's got the right arbor, but we're going to try it. No, we'll, I'll, I'll put some washers on it. It'll washers. be good. Let's do it. I like it. If you're not running Milwaukee ones, you have to put washers on it anyway. So I'm doing that right Very now. Very true. Yes. Yeah. Milwaukee has that awkward size. They do. Yeah, they're, they're, they know the deal. But we love Milwaukee here. We do. And not because they've given me a lot of free stuff First in the past. All, yep. It's the best color, right? Yes, color's great. Yeah, it's yeah. not yellow. I think Craftsman stole, didn't Craftsman, it was a little weird thing, where Craftsman was red and black but and they, it did you a know weird what? thing. When they did the Cobalt thing, they were gone for a little while, so Milwaukee swooped in. Right. They saw the opportunity. But I think Col I think uh, Craftsman's back to black and red. They are. Which is a shame, you but know? You know what? 
Thank you. Everyone stole everything. It's all about Nipex right yeah. now. That's all, it's all about, it's all about the Nipex. All right, Rich. This is how you're going to do it. You're going to start here. Okay. You're going to cut through here, probably. Mm -hmm. And you'll go back. Yeah. And then... <laughs> this works best if you cut here, because then you can assemble it in two pieces. Good point. If I just cut it in half, you just put it back together. Yay! I did it. I think. Let's do it. Yeah, it's perfect. Sad. Happy. It's just like it's just like us. It's just like us. Rich, you know what I forgot to say? So I'm always happy, but we're short-handed today. Usually there's four or five of us standing around watching this guy work, but that's, today that's very true. Sure, yeah, we we need to recruit more people just, to watch this two of us Joey do some grinding. Yeah. <laughs> so how do we get that perfectly centered? That's the question. Does the drive shaft shock? Are we bringing that somewhere? Oh yeah, we're okay. gonna we're gonna weld this and hand it to him and be like, hey, good luck. Hey, <laughs> sorry about that. Sorry. It looks kind of straight, right? So it's all kind of straight. It's, they're gonna remake the whole thing yeah, from scratch. They're just gonna put laugh it in the right at series yeah. U joints. Yeah. That's yeah. cute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's let's show you how to do this. Can you believe they did that? That'll be yeah. Imagine crazy. having proper tools. Dude, that'd be on their wall of shame. Yeah. <laughs> I can't put <laughs> on their wall of shame. What is that? What uh, is that? You know, oh my god! What is that? <laughs> It smells great. It turns out uh, the two minute set time is no joke. Oh, it's actually two minute set time? Yeah. Oh, I, it's starting to harden on the cardboard already. Yeah, it's hardening as I install. It's turning Oh, it's into... turned to chalk. Yeah. Well, good thing you use the entire can first go. No, I, I, <laughs> I left a ton. There's a ton in there. It's almost like you don't have to sand it. Oh, yeah. Okay. I got a little bit done. Okay. Well, that's all that matters in the end. So, so, you're, you're doing great. so remember how we said we'd pay based on experience? I mean, yes, we should have added metal, but we added what we had instead, which is body filler. Oh, yeah. I, honestly, we put, there's a ton. There's a, okay. There's, there's a, a half gallon in there. Yeah. Okay. I shouldn't say a ton because yeah. people, they don't like that. There's some in there. Why well, like when you say a ton? I don't, I don't understand. I don't know. They always end up taking a hammer, like beating on. Oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. people, it's it's a we're not selling this rabbit. <laughs> right. It's relax, no one. And then guess what? If we do sell it, have them refer back to the video. And the thing's gonna be so awesome, anyways. Yes. No one's gonna care about a ton of Bondo right. being on the thing in the first place. All right, I'm gonna mix up a new card here. Mix up a new batch. Okay. I literally, I did use almost all of it there. Okay. Well, cool. this is this is about eight dollars worth. Down yeah. Right. So it is. Just, Sorry. Yeah. All right, guys. What I want to talk about now are the wheel and tire setup uh, for this Volkswagen Caddy. These are the old Saab turbo wheels that everyone has been dying to purchase, and yes, they are for sale. So just drop us a message. Uh, these are the old Saab 900 turbo wheels. I want to say three spokes. You never see three spoke wheels like this anymore. Uh, these were custom cut uh, to fit the Volkswagen. These are normally Saab fitment. And you can see someone did that at their house, apparently, but they fit really well. Uh, unfortunately, these are only eight inches wide and we wanted something a little bit wider. This is a perfectly square setup, meaning every wheel is the same width. It's not staggered like most modern cars, most modern sports cars today. The, the running issue we're running into with this is that, uh, remember we switched the rear end of the Volkswagen Caddy to be that out of a 1996 Ford Ranger, and a 1996 Ford Ranger has five lugs. These only have four lugs. Uh, so really, these wheels weren't gonna work. We could make them work uh, by putting some custom adapters on it, but I don't think these wheels are that great anyways. I kind of wanted to get something new. Uh, these wheels and tires here, they're using, yeah, yeah, get this in here. They're using the Con, Conform, no, Economist. Economist tires. This is really typical Volkswagen fashion. What they'll do is uh, they'll have neck beards like myself and they'll just put really inexpensive and low quality parts on their car. We're gonna continue that trend and put these wheels and tires on it. Let me just show you. Come, come. Right here, as you can see, this wheel and tire setup is already stretched and these are pretty much steelies. 
But the good thing about these is that they're 10 inches wide. But my favorite thing about these wheels and tires right here is the tire brand. One of my favorite things in the whole world is looking at the Chinese tire manufacturer names. This is, where is the name on this This doesn't one? exist. No, that one has no name. These are on backwards. This has no name on it, apparently. Is there really no name on this? There's no name. <laughs> you look on here, this is the, uh, the reason why I bought these wheels and tires. How could you not want this name? Force come. Come on, it's a great name. Anyways, so uh, we're gonna put these on the car and I understand that what you're saying to yourself that why would you put stretch wheels and tires? It's annoying, stretch tires are dumb, I get it, but we're actually fitting with the theme of the Volkswagen. Most people that own Volkswagens have stretch wheels and tires. It's the whole stance thing, the kids are into it. So I'm gonna keep the whole stance look. I think it's gonna look kind of cool. These are gonna end up sticking out pretty far past the wheel arch because uh, these are 10 inches wide instead of the normal eight. I actually went down a size as well. The other uh, Saab turbo wheels were 16 inches. These are 15 inches in diameter. Gives us a little bit more rubber, a little bit more width, and I think it looks kind of cool. Yeah, some people do have a problem with this and I completely understand. Uh, if you have a problem with this, leave a comment down below or send us an email. And uh, we're actually gonna set up a fund for you to uh, send us money to purchase new wheels and tires that fit. But I know you're not gonna donate anything, so these are gonna stay on the car. Let's go over here real quick. The second question people ask a lot are what we're going to do in terms of adapting uh, these four lug wheels uh, to fit on the five lug setup on the rear axle. We're gonna use good old trusty wheel adapters. Now there's different ways that we could have done this. We could have taken off the face of this drum, drilled new holes for a four lug setup, a bunch of things we could have done, but that required a lot of work and effort. We're not really all about work and effort here. Easiest, simplest, cheapest way possible are to use adapters. These go from uh, five lug to four lug, which is the perfect adapter uh, for those wheels. So this is actually one and a half inches, almost two inches. It's gonna bring out the wheel and tire two inches past the fender pretty much. So what we'll do, I think uh, in another tomorrow actually, we're gonna get the fender flares that come over here so it won't stick out so far. As an example, what they're gonna look like, check out the front. Look at this. I think it looks kind of cool. You might not. Um, that's okay because uh, send us some photos. Actually, drop us some photos down below of your mid-engine Volkswagen Caddy and see how it looks and uh, we'll check it out for you guys. I'm not used to having wheels this small. Look at this, this is 15 inches. The drill can't even fit in here. One thing we have to figure out is what kind of shocks we're gonna use. These are the OEM shocks and obviously these weren't really working out so well. See how they go all the way down. So we were thinking of what we wanted to do for the new shocks and we came up with this solution. This is the, uh, an air shock that we're gonna use. We have two air shocks we're gonna put in the rear because there's a lot of questions that we don't really have the answers to. One of the big questions is where the wheel is going to sit within the fender well. We're not really sure. Um, a lot of this setup that Joy's doing right now is what's known as a static setup. There's no real room for adjustability. So everywhere we have it set, it's probably gonna stay there. Uh, we can't add any more leaf springs and we can't really add shock height, but with these new air shocks, we definitely can. I believe there's about five inches, maybe five and a half inches of travel with these once they're filled with air. When they're fully compressed, they're not Actually bad. about 12 inches on that one. 12 inches of travel? Yeah. How do you know? Because it's black. Oh my God. Stop that. How John knows that, we don't know. But anyways, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually tee these two together. Uh, I have to cut off some, maybe like a quarter of an inch from this uh, for the shock mount so it fits in here better. Good job for you. But let's see. We have to cut a little bit of that down, but once that's in, it's gonna fit right back in here. There you go. I think these, uh, on my other air shock system, you, you have to have like a minimum of like one or two PSI in them, I think at all times. I don't know if these are the same with these or not. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you sit there with the hammer. Pop. You think it's gonna pop? Yeah. In? Oh yeah. All right. So right now, uh, if there's one thing I like, it's the aesthetics of the vehicle and this rear bumper. A, it looks like Swiss cheese, and it just doesn't really fit the profile I'm looking for. So this rear bumper is gonna come off. This sticks out about like what? Maybe five, six inches past the rear bumper. 
I wanted to get a smooth roll pan, so I did, and that roll pan is... Hey, Rich. Is, on the, on the yeah. Shelf. On the shelf with the parts. Yes. Right. So we got this new smooth roll pan in. Uh, Joy, it has to be welded in, right? Yep. All right, so we're going to remove the old stinky bumper first before we put that new smooth one on. So let's get rid of this thing. What did we really solve here, John? We didn't we solve much. The bumper off. We didn't really solve much. I just wanted to play with the balls. Pretty thing. much, don't we all? Let's take turns playing with it. It's pretty fun. That was an ordeal. You still haven't solved any problems. You, uh, yeah. So how does <laughs> still in the same? Yeah. Technique. So how does the bumper go over over this now, John? Looks like John's shift is over. <laughs> 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 All right, so the problem now, John, try to fit that one more time. The problem now, besides uh, besides John not finishing his job, we also have this problem right here. Those two uh, plate lights are an issue. If you look behind here, one never worked in the first place, and the other one, those are just filled with sand. It's not even worth fixing those. That never worked. It's Bluetooth. A Bluetooth lights. All right. There you go. Perfect. Okay, so at this point, I have successfully removed uh, this thumb throttle uh, from the cyber quad. We're not going to be using the cyber quad anytime soon, so I figured I could still use this. And we're actually going to mount this uh, to the steering wheel of the Volkswagen Caddy. And this is gonna be used as the electronic boost button, AKA this is what activates the electric motor. We'll put it on the steering wheel. And uh, this this bore size is just perfect for the, for the Volkswagen uh, steering wheel. So that'll be on there in a very uh, clever location so I could easily grip it uh, as I'm holding the wheel. I'll, just like this, I'll be able to push this down and give the, uh, the front motor some extra boost. And uh, I'm just wiring it uh, with some Cat6 cable uh, right into here. This is what extends uh, the wire from under the hood uh, to the steering wheel. And uh, right now, uh, John and I were doing some investigative work to see uh, how we could find the, uh, the the sweep, I guess you could say, or the uh, the wiper. Um, so there's three wires in a uh, in a three wire setup. Obviously, we have the uh, positive, we have the negative, and we have the sweep. But it's also called other things. You could also call it a ground. You could call it the zero to five volt for the sweep. Um, but um, these are the output. potentiometer output, and um, these are the three wires right here. We were able to figure it out. We hooked it up to the uh, the voltmeter, and uh, we put it on ohms, and we were able to find out you know where the potentiometer lied, and uh, that is the the brown wire uh, connected to the brown and the green over on this. So that's how we connect it up and have it wired. So now I'm just going to solder these together so it looks a bit cleaner, and then we'll just go from there. Moment of truth. You away? Yeah. Uh, I have the uh, custom accelerator pedal going through the hood stack. John, you're right in there? Yeah. Uh, John went ahead and mounted it to the steering wheel. Uh, we have our thumb control there. That's what's going to throttle us forward. And we could just shift into reverse. You want to go in reverse. This really isn't complete yet, so don't start tearing me apart in the comment section yet. Uh, keep your comments to yourself. Just kidding. Uh, but we're going to plug this in and... Hopefully go for the first rip. All right. All right. Ready? Throttle? Yeah. Throttle's hooked up. Look at this cute little thing. I know, dude. I love the stance. I love it, too. People are like, oh, I don't like the stance. You're so tired. Well, you know what? Guess what? It's your truck. Yeah, which one of them was paying for it? That's the big question. It's your truck, Rich. Yeah, I'll see. Driver. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Love tap. It's coming. Oh, that's bright. Am I in neutral? 
Ready? It's moving. Oh. That's just rubbing from the wheels, right? Yeah. I hope so. Dude. It actually worked. We did something right. Well, kind of. <laughs> All right. All right, you ready? Can I go to half? Yeah. Oh, man. Dude, that's not bad, dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm not anymore. It's just, it's just, it's just cruising now. Oh. Dude, for half dead batteries. Oh, that's the wheel. Ooh. It rubs pretty hard. It has, it has more than enough torque to go anywhere, dude. Look at that. <laughs> this thing actually goes. Yeah, man. It doesn't. It, it's, it's not bad at all. Holy crap! John, try it. Huh? It's cool, right? Oh god, it's got so much torque. <laughs> what happened? John, try it. Just and giggles. You gotta look at, you gotta watch it. I wanna see it. Uh, go to, you know, you know what to do. It, oh, ooh, 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 yeah. It's pretty cool, right? right? It actually does pretty well. Dude, it's, it's as fast as the diesel was. Honest oh, to yeah. God, it is. Oh, yeah, it's got more pickup. Yeah. Uh, how do we. Not well, do guess that? what? You're driving it in. That's a good point. How do we not have it not do this? E brake. Yeah. Well. Bye, Joey. Bye. Joey. We did it. It's not bad, right? Not bad at all. All right, guys, I think that went really well as a first test drive. Uh, on the inside, we have, uh, Joey did the primer frame for the Hayabusa motor. And this stance, I think it's a really nice stance. You might not like it, and you might not like the stretch wheels. I think it's really cool. What's coming in next week is we have the fender flares. So this is gonna stick out so far. It sticks out about three inches past the vehicle. The fender flares we're gonna have, or we're gonna make it stick out about an inch or so. So it won't be as bad. I think the front fits damn near perfect. But yes, we still have to add fender flares in the front. As we were driving it, this was rubbing a little bit, which isn't ideal. You don't want it to rub into that too much. What we'll probably end up doing is once the flares come in, we're gonna peel this uh, piece of trim off and cut it back a little bit so it doesn't bottom out in the wheel. But this did really, really, really well. Don't forget that these are the same batteries that were used inside of the Argo 6x6 that we had, and they haven't been charged since then. So there's still a lot more potential in this. Uh, I think this setup works great as a, an electric assist. Uh, it's able to drive by itself on electric motor only and go a pretty decent clip. I think this is awesome. Uh, with some more battery capacity, we can get even more power out of it. But then again, this is just supposed to be used uh, for reverse and a front wheel drive electric assist motor when it comes to traction because I have a feeling that Hayabusa motor is gonna absolutely blow these rear tires off the rim. Uh, it's gonna be insanely fast. This was pretty quick as it was. I think the Hayabusa is gonna add a lot more depth to this uh, once we start putting that back in next week. Uh, we discussed this, we're gonna actually gonna be putting in this radiator. This is the radiator that we have off a Chevy C10 truck. And we will be putting it in the rear at an angle, almost like a trophy truck style. Instead of putting it in the front, there's not enough room for this large radiator to fit in front. We considered using the OEM stock radiator, but I think putting it back here makes it look a lot more aggressive. Uh, Joey did a great job welding in these shock mounts. And this is how the truck sits. It's pretty much static at this point uh, without putting any air in the bags. And you're supposed to run, uh, I think for these bags, about like 50 or 60 PSI uh, normally, which is gonna make perfect sense because once that motor goes in there and there's an extra few hundred pounds worth of weight in the back, it's gonna weigh this down even more. Then we'll be able to pump the bags up and uh, make more sense out of, out of how this thing sits. 
All right, here we have the old Volkswagen Caddy wheels. We have some bed rails for, uh, for Joey's truck. Uh, we have some Rivian mounts as well in there. And we have a special present that we're bringing to Freddie. We're actually going to Freddie's next week uh, with his McLaren P1. I'm bringing him this very special gift. And we'll be sending him all these things, not in the plane. What are we gonna use, Joey? ShipStation. ShipStation, that's right. ShipStation's the fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. In just a few clicks, you're managing orders like a professional, printing out discounted shipping labels, and getting your products out fast. ShipStation works with all the major U.S. carriers, including USPS, FedEx, even international, and you could compare and choose the best shipping solution every single time. They even offer big discounts on shipping costs and you can access the same postage and discounts that are usually reserved for large Fortune 500 companies like Tesla would be if they were recognized with the S&P. And right now, my people can try ShipStation for free for 60 days when you use offer code RICHREBUILDS for selling whatever it is that you're trying to sell. Use it now or after you watch this entire episode. Make ship happen and thank you ShipStation for sponsoring this episode and getting all of these products to the right people. Now, I know you guys wanna see this thing now, now, now. You guys have short attention spans because you're always looking at Facebook Reels and YouTube Shorts and everything's quick, quick, quick. But this is the current state of the Volkswagen Caddy. I actually fast forwarded quite a few things uh, to get to this point. A lot of the things we didn't show on camera because we figured you guys would be bored to death. Uh, again, because you have really, really short attention spans. At the side of the Volkswagen Caddy, you'll see some new changes here. You are going to see an air intake scoop and an exhaust. Honestly, the exhaust is my most favorite part of this entire build. I'll tell you why in a second. But we have that side vent right here. John was able to cut that template out. And now that feeds fresh air into the turbocharger. On this side, we have the exhaust tip. So you're going to be taking an air and shooting it out on the same side. So when you look in the side view mirror, you'll be able to see this thing shoot flames in your side view mirrors, which I think is absolutely awesome. The thing I love most about this is not the fact that it has an exhaust at the side, it's that this exhaust tip is from a McLaren. So there's a literal McLaren exhaust tip on the Volkswagen Hayabusa swap, and I think this is lovely. I think it's a great talking point, a great selling point to people to say, hey, what kind of various things was this thing built from? And it's pretty much a hodgepodge of parts that we happen to have in the shop. The rear radiator is mounted. Yes, we're doing a rear mount radiator. We have two of the tabs welded in thus far, and uh, we'll be welding some more tabs in to help secure it. Uh, this will be mounted towards the rear uh, with fans right here. I think it looks really cool in the back. Yes, we could have had it in the front, but I think visually this is a really cool appeal. This will be going to uh, a lot of shows just to take it around to show people uh, what's possible. And already, even before this stuff was in, we had people stopping us asking, what the heck is this thing? And nothing was even in the back. So because of the size of this radiator, there's going to be so much flow for that motor, so much volume for that motor, rather. I highly doubt this thing's going to get hot at all. So right here, that is the prior oil cooler. That will be removed. And we'll be using this as a combination radiator and oil cooler in one. So we're getting rid of that. Uh, you also see we added a five gallon fuel cell. I think this is gonna be enough, but we've made provisions to add a secondary five gallon one if we need to. Obviously the choice is you'd want a 10 gallon one, but we weren't sure uh, because of the size constraints. We didn't want to take up too much space back here. So we'll start with the five. If we realize we're driving this thing a lot more, uh, we'll likely either switch to a 10 or we're gonna add another five located elsewhere in the vehicle. But uh, everything is pretty much in. I am super proud with the way this thing came out. Uh, Joey also installed the, uh, the rear roll pan. I think it looks a lot smoother. I think it looks a lot cooler, a lot cleaner, and it saves a ton of weight too. We removed at least 15 to 20 pounds uh, worth of metal from that old rear bumper that was falling apart anyways. You need a tetanus shot to even walk around this thing. Uh, we have the air shocks in. Uh, we have the, the air nozzle right here. This is how you pump it up. You pop this off and you can actually pump up the air shocks from here. It's a normal tire valve. And we ran the wires, ran the air lines to each one. So after you fill it up, it pumps it up in the air just a little bit. So right now we have about, I don't know what we have, maybe 10 or 15 PSI in those shocks at the moment, but this whole thing is coming together. I'm super proud of this. Uh, again, we have the thumb throttle right here to control it. So here's some things we have to work out. This is what's on our mind. Again, I know we, there's, 
I know you guys are bored. You want to see it done. We want to see it done too, but there's still a lot of things to think about. We have to get that drive shaft back. So right now we're at the mercy of the drive shaft uh, place we dropped it off at uh, to get us back that drive shaft to either balance the current one or to make us a new one. So if you happen to know a drive shaft place that could do this faster, yes, we tried drive shaft shop. They've done work for us in the past, but they're super, 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 super backed up. Yes, we tried drive shaft shop, uh, but they're super backed up. Uh, we're kind of looking for a drive shaft place uh, and in case this one doesn't work out. They kind of been dragging their feet. And these are the things that take a long time. We're actually depending on other people to do stuff for us because we don't have the materials to do it in-house. Cooling system, oil cooler, uh, that's already installed in the rear. Uh, we need a scavenge pump. We need a fuel pump. Uh, we need the rear brakes connected. We need an e-brake because we're realizing how difficult this thing is when it doesn't have an e-brake. Uh, we have the, uh, the vacuum pump. And the reason why we need a vacuum pump is because there is currently no power brake booster on this. Usually that, re that relies on engine vacuum to do that. So we have to make or get rather our own vacuum pump in order to do that. I'm debating whether or not to use a Tesla one. I haven't really decided yet. And the very last thing, but definitely not least, is the shifting and the clutch. How do we figure out the clutch mechanism? I have an idea in my head as to how I want it to work. I would actually like to use an electronic shifter. I'm sure you've seen those in videos in the past where you could actually push a button and it could shift up and down for you. I think that's the sickest thing ever. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is $1,500 to $2,000 to have that. Uh, so if we don't go that route, we have to find out a way to actually use uh, a, a actual clutch lever uh, to shift gears. If we use a clutch lever, we also have to use the clutch after every shift, which I think kind of gets annoying, whereas the electronic one, you only have to use it once uh, to take off and get the vehicle going. But I think this thing with the steering wheel here accelerator for the electric uh, portion of things, and also a paddle shift system where we could shift up and down would be absolutely stunning. So I'm hoping that works out. Uh, stay tuned, guys. Thank you for making it this far. But we have a really, really lot of cool stuff to show you guys. I'm super pumped. The guys are super pumped about this. Fender flares are coming in. This is going to look like a completely different truck very, very soon. But either way, thank you guys for watching. And as usual, I will see you guys next week.